All right, hold up, hold up. Let me get this right. <laughs> My face when they add nothing new to Minecraft 1.21. How you doing, everybody? I'm only kidding. Welcome back to Snapshot Season, baby. It's Snapshot 23 W 04A. Change that 23 to a 4, though. This week, it is time again for a brand new snapshot. In this week's snapshot, we're looking at a breeze adjustments, armadillo stuff, and a little bit more. Where I'd like to kick today's snapshot adventure off is over here, though. So in the last snapshot, we took a look at some beautiful, beautiful brand new wolf collars. It's like gorgeous. Seriously, some of the best stuff I've ever seen. However... I, my heart jumped for a minute. It looked like they updated the collar, but no, 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 no. The cat collar. It's not like actually in parody with the collars over there now. We're going to have to get a little bit of work going on, I think, right? Come on. The changes. They are noticed from the beginning inside of this snapshot. When creating a brand new world, instead of allow cheats, it's now allow commands. Maybe you will feel a little bit less bad about it. And speaking of commands, we've got the introduction of a brand new command. The slash transfer command. However, this command is not enabled by default. This transfer command relates to all of that technical stuff we were talking about in last week's snapshot video with like servers, transfer packets, everything like that. It's really long story short, a beautiful thing. However, this command is only going to exist on dedicated servers. This is interesting. I don't think they've ever done something like this. I mean, you correct me in my beautiful new skin if I'm wrong, but every command so far, well, look, every command so far that exists, I'm pretty sure it's always existed everywhere, not like only in a specific situation. That's kind of interesting. Real quick, a quick reminder to tap like on this video. It helps them out huge time. Also, I started streaming again, except now it's on YouTube. After this video, slide over to the live tab for a couple of odds. I plan on streaming something interesting again this Friday, but next up, let's move on to Minecraft the 1.20.5's brand new beautiful mob, the Armadillo. And this week's snapshot, the Armadillo aesthetically is exactly the same as it was last time. Maybe the devs have finally perfected it and it's beautiful, and maybe this will be how it stays forever. At the time of recording this video on Minecraft Bedrock, there hasn't been a preview quite yet, but I bet by the time it's out, the preview will be out too, and hopefully it'll have an updated armadillo over there as well. Brand new armadillo functionality though in this week's snapshot. So let's say I attack an armadillo, it's gonna roll up into this ball right there. Now if I walk away from the armadillo and uh, give it a second, the armadillo should eventually pop out of that ball. However, me being me, the fool who attacked it recently, if I even just walk close enough to it again and it realizes that I'm over here, theoretically, it should go up into a ball. Guess it doesn't really work though. <laughs> Another brand new armadillo functionality is when it's up in a cube like this and you hit it, it's actually going to take a little bit less damage. We can go ahead and hit this armadillo practically all day long and it's not going to like... I mean, look at me. For science, I'm absolutely mauling this thing and it's just bouncing and bouncing and bouncing and, and bouncing forever, basically. Now, here's the catch. With this mechanic, very, very cool. If it's a weak attack, like let's say a punch, it will fully resist it, which means you could kind of theoretically maybe like use the armadillo for like a game or something. Like with this one, the first place my mind goes is over to like an ice arena. Imagine playing like almost like, I don't know, soccer, but with your hands and hitting an armadillo and sliding it around. Because it's in a shell, it's taking no damage repeatedly. It doesn't matter. It's just going to stay in a shell. However, if it's a stronger attack, like let's say a sword, the armadillo unfortunately will take damage and eventually I'll take it out, but it'll take less damage than it normally would. The fact that the devs listen to the community with this one and the fact that it takes zero damage when it's rolled up in a ball is so cool. This armadillo might be pretty fun for mini games on this next update. That's pretty sweet. Now, next up, I'd like to take another look at this strange armadillo scooting mechanic right here, because still, with the brush, if I walk up to it, I can scoot it repeatedly, zero cooldown or anything like that. When it's shelled up, same exact thing, it doesn't matter. As you know, you slide into the crafting table just like this, and you make a dog armor. Now, tragically, even still up until this moment, the wolf armor is a one-size-fits-all type of thing. You craft it, and that's just how it's gonna look forever. But this is where I think it's a problem. If you want to take a look at this thing from Mojang's point of view, which is, oh, pets are like personality, customization. That's why you get all these different cats. Uh, the dog armor. It needs one more thing. I am no developer, so I don't know how technically difficult this would be, but I've seen a couple cool ideas. Last week, we talked about what if maybe you craft this thing with a die. That would be cool. Another great option that I saw, though, might be a little bit more difficult, is slightly different colored armadillo. Maybe each armadillo has a different color. There's a little bit of a cooldown with the scoot. And basically, to make beautiful dog armor over there, you need six scoot of the same color from an armadillo. Maybe you get, like, a kind of a green one, maybe kind of an orange one, whatever. Kind of like this concept art for the armadillo right there. 
Finally, last but not least, my favorite idea is a brand new armor trim. This could be thrown into the loot table of any structure in the game. Doesn't really matter. You kick it all off with a specific special armor trim only for dog armor. Then you put dog armor right there. Then you put any of the materials that you already have the gradients for in the files into there. And the gradient slaps on top of the wolf armor. I really wish Mojang would stop like adding cool things in an update and then ditching it one update later. Please add armor trim for the dog armor, please. It's the exact storytelling functionality we need for 1.20. All right, moving on. Technical changes. The data pack version has been bumped up again. Big rip. And that server TPS chart, it's been improved. So me currently, I'm not in the server until suddenly I am in a server. With F3 and 2 pressed at the same time, we get all of this information down at the bottom screen right there. All of this information technically improved and everything is all laid out for you right here. You go ahead and pause the video right here. Take a screenshot and read up on it if you're into techie stuff. Inside of the world and customization screen, you press edit inside of the menu to get to this screen. There's been some changes made to when you optimize a world. When one optimizes and upgrades a single player, world entities and POI directories will also be optimized too. All right, now next up, we've got the elephant in the room. The big thing that everyone is wondering about, Minecraft 1.21. What in the world is going on with 1.21? Ugh, I wish I knew. So as you may recall, last year, Minecraft Snapshot 23W048 was the big bang, the big return. Armor trims were added to the game. Nothing too gigantic was added inside of this snapshot, tragically. I really hope the devs are actually cooking up something really big here, because it's been a long time, and the consensus on 1.21 is... Yes, I guess it's up to you. I will say, though, that the changes made inside of this week's snapshot to the Trial Chambers and the Breeze mob specifically are very good changes. I like them, and they make sense. First off, coming up here in post here, I almost forgot about it because it was technically added in last week's snapshot, but check out that brand new Breeze particle. Oh, it's breezy. It's beautiful. It's easy. Oh, it's kind of wonderful. Last week, for the first time in like a long time, I don't even remember when, there was a second snapshot and it was mildly significant. In the second snapshot, the wind charge projectile was updated with its new model. I will not lie, this is one thing that does give me a little bit of hope for Minecraft and what's gonna happen this year. Like, two snapshots in a week and the second snapshot doesn't just like fix a bug or something? That's fire! That's really cool! I feel like that's what it was like before I ever started making snapshot videos and I've always craved to know what that actually feels like. That's so cool. So let's check this out up close and personal. Here we are at a trial that has been changed. Move number one. Inside of this trial chamber, let's say I dropped an iron golem in here. Well, by default, the breeze is going to hate the iron golem now and will attack it. Also, the breeze has gotten a little bit more dangerous now because of what it won't attack. The breeze will never attack other mobs inside of the trial chamber now. So, like, maybe a skeleton, a zombie that it accidentally got shot by? It doesn't matter. Keep in mind that projectiles will still bounce off of the breeze, and that's going to make this thing relatively dangerous until the iron golem... God reaches the breeze, then it's easy again. Some of you may be wondering, the loot of the trial chambers, it is still absolutely god-awfully terrible, <laughs> and the key has no use either, so maybe next week. For a full list of the mobs of the breeze, we'll now never attack. We've got the skeleton, we've got the stray, we've got the zombie, we've got the husk, the spider, the cave spider, and the slime. If for some reason a slime, say, were to ever accidentally attack a breeze, they'll know how that happens, the breeze is going to do absolutely nothing at all. And also, in the reverse, let's say the breeze accidentally shot the skeleton, maybe it like walked away. Well, the skeleton is not going to turn around and target the breeze now. It's still going to stay focused on you or one of the other 50 skeletons that spawned inside of the trial chamber. I will say this change right here is one of the smartest changes the devs have made to the breeze so far. Definitely very good, but it still needs to drop. Uh, really needs to drop. <laughs> I would like to end today's video on a high note, though. I feel like there's been some, like, relatively pessimistic tones inside of it. I'm sorry about that. But anyways, look at this. In the crafting table, four blocks of copper to four copper grades. That's a one-to-one -one recipe. One block, one grade. Over here in the stone cutter, they've done it. They actually listened with the copper. One block, it turns into four, just like it works with the cut copper. Look, everything doesn't need to make sense. Come on, come on. Let's have a little bit of fun here. We can go ahead and put one copper block in that thing and get four copper copper grates now all we need is like copper bars like an iron bar or copper panes or heck maybe even copper 
wall, anything. It's great. It's beautiful. I love it. Anyways, that's about all we got for today's snapshot. I'm thinking hopefully next week will be a big one with the first new features, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Until then, tickle that like button, subscribe, and maybe check out one of my live streams. If everything goes as planned, I'll be live Friday, maybe like 10, 11 a.m. Eastern time, somewhere like there. So check it out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.